Hello and welcome back to The Netball Show. We are very excited to have with us um, a regular face that you've seen on Sky Sports over the last couple of decades. Uh, it's England and Manchester United midfielder Paul Scholes and his incredibly talented daughter, Manchester Thunder and England under-21 netballer Alicia Scholes. Guys, great to have you with us. Uh, just to tell our viewers a little bit more about you, Alicia, you've risen up through the England age groups, uh, played netball under seven under 19s, under 21s, and you've just been called up as part of the Manchester Thunder senior squad, still playing for the under 21s. So you're doing a tremendous job on the court. You guys have been in lockdown together for the last few weeks. Uh, tell us um, how bored you are right now, what you've been up to, and how are the fitness levels? Um, yeah, go on. yeah, well. Alicia and um, our older brother Aaron are actually trained PT, so we've been quite busy um, over these last few weeks. We've had plenty to do. I've been like a little guinea pig for him, I suppose, trying to get me out there training. It's hard to get a day off, actually. <laughs> You've had a fitness camp, haven't you, the whole time? I've had a fitness camp for seven or eight weeks. But, um, <laughs> I should not enjoy that much, actually. But no, it's, fine. it's been nice to get a day off. We've, we've done other things as well. You've been keeping your fitness up, haven't you, with, with no netball, obviously, so... It's been quite difficult, but she's she's very dedicated, professional, and I think she when when she goes back, she'll be certainly ready to play. I think I'll be fitter than when I was a kid. Uh, you said uh, yesterday we were chatting to you briefly. The five k, Alicia's time was very good. Uh, Alicia's time is excellent. Yeah, she's trying to beat it every day as well, and. Uh, I actually, the first time I did it, I think she challenged me whether they do all these challenges on Instagram and what have you, and she challenged, challenged me to do it, and I, I posted my time on, it, on Instagram, my story, um, and someone said to me, why didn't I try running it? <laughs> <laughs> so so I, I quickly took that down, I've not posted any more times, but now Alicia has been trying to smash her record every day, and like I said, she's a very fit girl, very dedicated, so... 21-25 I'm on, but... It's hard to get it lower than that, but I'm trying. That's amazing. That is brilliant. Um, Alicia, are you missing your teammates at the moment? Uh, I am missing them, but to be honest, it feels like since lockdown, we've got closer than we were even when we used to see each other a lot of training because we have WhatsApp groups, group chats and stuff. And um, Laura's um, doing a good job of like being the captain with Emma and keeping everything together. And um, we've got a lockdown cup going on at the minute. So every day there's a challenge that's put in there and then we're in teams and the quickest person to do it gets extra points and stuff. So we're very interactive. I think um, loads of the teams have been creative at the moment, which is amazing. Uh, you are lucky enough to be currently in the Thunder squad who are the uh, Super League champions from last year. Um, and, of course, you got to witness England winning the Commonwealth Games gold um, a couple of years ago. Uh, is that ambitions for you, making that first team, getting into the England squad, following in your dad's footsteps, but just in a better sport? Yeah, well, um, <laughs> definitely. Um, I, do, I do feel so lucky to have um, that England Commonwealth Games team um, ahead of me and my generation just to watch them because um, it's just... I think it's just that sense of just believing that if it can be done and even though we are underdogs that it's been done before and it can be done in the future and if we just keep working, doing everything right, then in the future we we will give them, give them teams a run for the money and we are here to... Um, we are there to like challenge them and not just be second place or third place, but in the future we do want to go for them gold medals and prove that we are just as good as them. I think it's important as well that she, she continues to develop and learn. I don't think she needs to set targets at this age. She's, what, she's only 19, so she's, she's getting great experience at the minute. She's got Rachel Henry, who's an ex-Super League player at Berry, who's the coach and plays them every Sunday morning. Jade Clark also plays, and you can't get a more experienced girl than Jay Clark, and she's absolutely brilliant with Lissy, great bits of advice, not just with Lissy, with the, with the rest of the team as well. And she's also training every week with the best team in England, which is Manchester, uh, Manchester <laughs> Thunder, which I'm sure Tamsin will, will be happy about. But no, she's getting great, great experience. No, no need to set targets. Um, keep doing what she's doing, keep learning them. 
No, I'm sure the future will be bright. Don't worry about that. Tamsin, by the end of this call, will have you signed up for Scotland, <laughs> Alicia. Don't worry. She's, she's been watching some of your, your footage, actually, and just seeing this engine that you've got, a proper mid-quarter. What have you learned from your dad? How has he, how has he helped you? And, and what, what, in turn, Paul, have you learned about a netball through Alicia? I think, if anything, what I've learned off my dad is just to stay never like look to never be too far ahead of yourself he just says to me before I go to training all the time that thunder should be my main focus and I've just got to keep going to thunder training at every single time I go just wanting to learn and get better and don't try not to obviously obviously it's every girl's dream to um play for England but I'd, I'd never look at that now I just think I want to make sure I'm the best I can be for thunder and I just want to be one of them players, like, in training, I see Caroline and just starting seven every week, doing doing a job for Thunder. I just want to be someone who can go on court every week and do my best for Thunder and be well-known at Thunder rather than look too far ahead. Now, Paul, you're obviously a massive netball fan. We interviewed you when Thunder played Pulse at the beginning of the season. I know you go to all the games. Uh, tell our viewers, I'm sure we've got a lot of football fans watching, why um, fans of other sports should watch netball, why it's such a great sport to watch and be part of. Um, I just think it's, a, you know, people say it's a non-contact sport, but it, it's far from that. It's, it's very aggressive, very physical, I think, technically and tactically. You have to be very good as well, especially someone playing in, in, in the centre court. Um, it, it's a great game to watch. It's exciting. Like I said, it's end to end. You, it, there's never a rest. The girls have to be so fit. And like I, you know, I've witnessed the fitness work that girl like Karen does at Thunder, that Rachel does at, at Berry. It's very difficult. It seems like every other week they have a bleep test, and it's not. It's not <laughs> That's so true. Not the <laughs> I would have been but the game is you, you, you've got. As I said, it's it's so end to end. There's there's no time no time to rest. I I'm, I'm a parent of a girl who's a, a centre court player. I feel, I feel sorry parents of shooters because the, the real pressure is on them when it's going end to end, when it's close. When you know if the, if your girl gets a chance, to, I know there's pressure on the girls obviously to get the ball in the circle, but the girls have the real pressure. The ones who've got to get it in to win the game. And like I say, I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm the I'm the father of a, a centre court girl. <laughs> she'll, she'll have you pulling hamstrings don't worry about that and um, Paul while we've got you just briefly on on the subject of football and the Premier League restarting talk that of course they'll go back into training next week but no tackling in training how practical is that well I wouldn't have caught with that anyway um no look, that, that, that's just not real I think training has to be it has to be safe to train of, of course it does it first of all and it has to be full on. There's no, you can't not tackle. You can't get in people's faces when you when you're playing football. And we, we are people trying to stick to government guidelines. And I think the guidelines are that there's no professional football till June the first. I think. So I I think from if, if we're going to do that, if we're going to stick to government guidelines. We try and get as close to that day as as we possibly can. But players these days, they, they're so fit. They're so they're like machines after them. So I think they only need two weeks, full training, get back into it. And hopefully by, I don't know, 10th, 11th, 12th of June, they, they, they should be ready to go. And I think domestically we can get the league done, they can get the FA Cup done. I think it's going to be very, very difficult for European competition with the Champions League and Europa. I think it's going to be difficult to, to get that done. But I think domestically we can get the season finished in five or six weeks and hopefully have a little break and get into next season as well. Paul, great to get your thoughts on that and really lovely to chat to you both. And Alicia, uh, we have no doubt we'll be speaking to you a lot more over the next few months and years to come. Thanks, guys.